Come hear me, little ducky. Blow up smoke, me bucky. Have the good dick cracky. Till the boat comes in. Dance to the daddy, sing to the mummy. Dance to the daddy, to the mummy, sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy. Thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. You've got a lot to learn, then. <laughs> if you want to get on in politics, never open your big mouth before you get your facts straight. What facts, man? One, Jack Ford was elected district secretary. Why? Two, he then had the right to choose an assistant and he picked Matt Headley. <laughs> Three, now that Ford's gone, Headley has a duty to carry on until such times as the area committee meets to appoint an acting secretary. Now, there's no unconstitutional about that. You sound like you're on his side, man. Look, Sid, Headley's popular with the lads. He might have had a bit of luck getting there, but they've forgotten about that now, and he's no red. If we come out against him and try to force through our own man, we might not win. But are you saying that we're not even going to try? I'm saying that there's other ways of skinning a cat. I suggest we try them first. Such as? Riding on his coattails, the way he did with Jack Ford. How the hell are we going to do that, Eddie? He hasn't appointed his assistant yet, has he? It's quite simple, Uncle. German industry is at a standstill because the mark is not worth the paper it is printed on. My only hope is to obtain a foreign contract. If I fail, then I shall have to close my factory. My dear Friedrich, I'm a peer of the realm. It's a generation since my family had anything to do with commerce. A family has many branches, Uncle. Some are weaker than others, but they are nevertheless part of the same tree. I'm not disowning you, my boy. It's just that I can't understand why you came to me. You are my uncle. You also happen to be a duke. Dukes know the right people. We know each other, but the British aristocracy are hardly the right people for anything. Well, what about coronations? No one else could carry off those ridiculous togs with such flair. You're quite wrong, my dear. Anyone can look irresistible in ermine. The trick, as Ramsay MacDonald discovered, is to keep your appeal by looking like a down-at-heel undertaker. We have no one else to turn to, George. This is Northumberland, 300 miles from the centre of power. What on earth do you expect me to do? You know, I remember something your father said. Your 10th birthday, I think it was. You were having a race with some other children. We were watching you through the French windows. When you saw you were going to lose, you fell. Your friends came to your aid, and you took advantage of their sportsmanship to get up and win. Your father said he'd never known anyone who made such a virtue out of helplessness. Oh, that's daddy to a T, Aunt Grace. Now look what you've done. <laughs> Undermine what little influence I have over this precocious child. Besides, I fail to see the relevance. The relevance, George is that you are not nearly such an anachronism as you pretend. I'm sure there's someone to whom you could introduce us. It's a tall order. If I'm forced to close my factory, Mama and I will be ruined. Hmm. What about that chap that Roddy turned up with last year? Frightful ball from the other side of Hadrian's Wall. Wasn't he in trade? Harry Chalmers. Yes, his father owns most of Glasgow. That's the fella. I drank all my whiskey, I remember, so he owes us a favour. You don't have to go as far as Scotland, Daddy. Huh? For someone that owes you a favour. Land fit for heroes, I told us. And here we are, five years after it's all over, still prisoners of war. A war we're supposed to have won. Aye. Well, it's not good enough, brother. Prisoners have a duty to escape. Well, it sounds like you want to lead us. Are you a candidate, Eddie, for my job? I've thought about it. And? I'll settle for assistant secretary. Let's pick up you. By the time you appointed one, is it? Maybe. Anybody else in mind? No. Well then, look, brother, your confirmation meeting's coming up shortly. They haven't done bad these past few weeks, but some of the committee might prefer a tougher man. Like you? Well, look at it this way. You nominate major assistant before the meeting, you could stand a better chance. And if I stand alone? You could be hiding away 400 quid a year. All right, cheer up, Pat. Might never happen. What? The funeral. Three days he's been gone. Three days. Look, don't fret. If Jack says he's fixing a divorce, that's what he's doing. I don't trust him. Well, he's always paid straight with us. Always paid his debts. That's what bothers us. He owes us more than a divorce. What? You've given us a bane, Tom. It's something he couldn't do. He'll never forget it. By then, what's he doing in Scarborough? Laughing up his sleeve at us. You'll come back like a cat full of cream. Well, now to show for it, but a few blonde hairs on his collar. Oh, how we can he? Don't take on. He'll keep his word. You'll see. 
Aye, but when, Tom? I'm nearly three months gone. I can't wait forever. Aye, but there's still six months to go. There's plenty of time. Oh, there is, is there? You know all about it, I suppose. How long it takes to get a divorce. Oh, I know. Well, it's about time you found out, then, isn't it? Look, I know Jack. He'll not let us down. Because he's still your marrow. Aye. And I'm still his wife, God help us. A woman living in sin. On a duke's estate. Oh, man, what are people going to say when they find out we're not married? Why, who's going to tell them? Lady Caroline, for one. Never. She promised to keep her mouth shut. Promises can be broken, Tom. Once I start to show, she might drop a hint, make a joke of it even. That's all it would take, a hint to a snob like that bailiff's wife, Mrs. Armstrong. Look, Pat, I know there's a risk, but it's a risk we have to take. No. Huh? It's not a risk we have to take. We can get out while the going's good. Oh, get out where? Your dad's shop. Go and work for somebody who already knows about her. But why don't you just leave it, woman? What are you creating when you run out of clean shirts? No, thanks. You had a sight more when I got you back in hospital. All right, Bill, stop fussing. Cup of tea? Tea? Aye. Tall. That trip to Garibaldi Street was far on much for you. Oh, well, capitalist has to move around. That's how they make their money. Far oh, too much for you. I should never have asked. I could have said no. Man's work pushing me about. Man, I go tell him. Tom's happy where he is. He'll not want to come back to Gala Shields. He ain't listened dead, darling. Oh, don't you come on her, Bill. Find yourself another Mrs. Turnbull. Some poor creature that's terrified of hellfire. You didn't stop him cheating us. Last month's accounts, a kid at ten could see they don't tell you. You must think I'm daft. She thinks what I think, that you can afford it. Well, not a charity. I'm sick of losing 10% of your profit every week. I need somebody I can trust in Garibaldi Street. And your son to push you there. Well, you make that sound like an accusation. Look, I'm offering my job, Bella, like any other employer. You can take it or leave it. I know it's asking a lot, Pet, but your dad gave her the money to set up here. We owe him something. Billy owes him. It's part of my 400 quid he gave us, the money Billy owes me. Well, he's no chance of getting that, has he? Not while Billy's stuck in Wellesley Street. Well, you knew that when he gave it us. He didn't know he was going to need us back in Galashiel, though, did he? He doesn't need us. There's plenty of folk who jump at the chance of looking after his shop for him. Not people he can trust. Anyway, there's something else. What? There'd be two pay packets coming in at the end of the week. <sighs> Pushing that chair around all day, I go out my mind. Forget it. Look, I've got a canny job here, Pet. A job I'm good at, no. I said forget it. I'm a skilled man and you're asking us to turn myself back into a labourer. I'm not asking you now, Tom. It's your decision. Jack Ford's not back from Scarborough yet. You know, how long has he been gone? Three days. Tom and Dolly must be worried sick. What for? Jack's a big lad, he'll not get lost. We have forgotten the bairn on the way. Oh, well, they'll not be too keen to buy it where they are, then. Dolly's still not married when her time comes. She won't be working with her own kind. You'd like them to come crawling back to you, is that it? Look, nobody's asking them to crawl. It's a straightforward business arrangement. What do they get out of it? With canny wages, they'll need every penny they can get on going to the mouth to feed. There's more important things than money. Oh, aye, maybe most of them can be bought with it. You want the answer soon, then? Well, yeah, aye. The new shop will be ready to open at the end of the month. You'll not use me as an excuse. Excuse for what? For dragging them back here. I mean it now. No putting pressure on them on account of me not feeling too well. I won't need to put pressure on. They'll come back with their own free will. Sunday? Hmm? I could go out there Sunday. No, you've got to get away from them ledgers of yours. Well, how in the world am I going to get out there? Airship? Train? I could push you to the station. You could ride the same way you went the Miners Gale and the Gord's van. No, no, you're not up to it. Who says? I see. What about the other end? Just a rough track of old Tom's cottage, isn't it? Hey, well, we'll take it steady. Doesn't matter what time we get there. Well, it's uphill all the way. Downhill coming back, then. Terrible. What are you trying to do? Beat me to the grave? What's that? Iron? Iron. 
Tiddly. <laughs> Come on, Tiddly. Ah, waste of time. They bring over the cracks when the house is falling down. The house would stand a better chance if you took more care of its foundations. Well, my foundations are rotten, some riddled with dry rot. Yours you should be looking after. There's nothing wrong with me. Isn't there? Remember, I'm a doctor too. Billy, don't carry the world on your shoulders. You're not built for it. If you go on like this, you'll be no use to anyone. Physician, heal thyself. Don't start calling the Bible at me. I get enough of that from Father Courtney. Ah, oh, you're a big disappointment to him. He told you that. A good Samaritan who's also an atheist. He's confused. <laughs> he wants to inject me with a dose of religion. <laughs> he was born 20 years too late. Why? Ah, you're too young to remember, believe it. 20 years ago, the Christian Social Union could fill any hall in the country. Bishop Westcott, Scott Holland, Gilbert Chesterton. Oh, it was a privilege to listen to him. People were flocking to join the crusade. Even you? Oh, I signed on for a while. Till I realized man can't concern himself with eternal damnation while he's suffering from pain and hunger. No. I know what you're thinking, Billy. You're thinking I should put on an act. Let him believe the black sheep has returned to the fold. Well, it wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't it? Interesting moral question, that. To die true to one's creed or deny it to comfort the living. Wait. What would you advise, Doctor? I'd advise you not to talk so much. Will you look at the state of that? Drunk as a lord. Disgusting. I can't turn me back for five minutes. Matt. Max! Oh, oh look, Fred. No morning, is it? No, it's not morning. Uh, it's half past ten at night, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, I didn't expect you back, Fred. That's no excuse. Uh, I bring Janet to meet this nice, respectable fellow I'm going to marry, and what do I find? A hopeless drunk. Who's Janet? I am. Um... Oh. I told me ma'am she was going to bide the night with us, so she wouldn't be worried about me virtue. Looks like I wasted me time. Oh, don't go on this pet. I was lonely. Lonely? This, uh... Emptied itself, then, did it? Oh, Eddie Morton, convener over at Blount's. Uh, he was waiting for us at the Blue Bell. Said he had some uh, private business to discuss, so we came back here. And drank yourselves under the table. Ah, uh, you can put it away again, Eddie. Talk the back end of a donkey and all. He'll have had enough excitement for one evening, uh, then. We'd best be off, Janet. We've just got time to get the last try. Uh, you can't go back now. Why not? All this way for now, it's a waste of money. You can't expect this poor innocent lass to share the house with a drunkard. Well, it'll be a lesson to her. Show her how low a man can sink when he's left alone for too long. Good of you to see me, sir, Ratio. Not at all. Something to my advantage, the Duke said. Sort of bait he knows I can't resist. I hope our association will prove to be of advantage to both of us. Jerry? Thank you. I didn't know the Duke had relatives in Germany. It is hardly something he would shout from the rooftops. I take it you haven't seen each other for some time. Till now we have met only once, when he came to stay with us before the war. Before we discuss business, Mr. Peltzer, there's something you ought to know. Your son. He was killed in the war. I see you've been fully briefed. My uncle assured me you did not hold the rest of us responsible for the sins of a few politicians. Not if it stops me making money. I'm sure he told you that. I believe he did say something of the sort, yes. Futile emotion, <laughs> hatred. Won't bring back my son. Or your father. I see we have both been fully briefed. Before the war, the Peltzer factory employed 1,400 men, had a turnover of some millions. At the moment, it's operating at 5% of its capacity. That information did not come from my uncle. No. My compliments, then. An excellent piece of reserve. Thank you. You wish to know, of course, what I can offer in return. I am a businessman, Mr. Belzer, not a philanthropist. You are aware of the present rate of exchange between our two countries? I find it impossible to keep pace with your inflation. When I left, the pound was worth seven billion marks. By now, the figure may well have doubled. Which would make your industry doubly competitive. For 2,000 pounds a ratio, you could buy a whole street in Stuttgart. For 200,000, the whole city. Three, then. And out. And in. And out. <laughs> and in. And out. Well, it's more than tabs and drink, Mr. Morton. You're going to have to start looking after yourself. Good food. All the fresh air you can get. Fresh air? In Galashield? Cut out the smoke. 
and the drinks. Drop a whiskey in the tub or two and never hope me, man, Doctor. Are you going to listen to me or not? But I'm no good without a bit of drink inside. Well, you came here for me advice. You've got it. Now act on it. Well, I have to be off work. I'm afraid you'll have to do a lot of things. I want to take a sample of your sputum. Ship components. You can make them to our specifications? If we get the money and raw materials, we can make anything. Where would you get the steel? From here in England, I hope. Joyce, get me Mr. Fermo of the Castle Steel Works, Sheffield. How would you pay for it? Ah, concerning payment, I have a proposition to make. Well. I cannot raise the capital. My factory, however, is a considerable asset. If you were to buy the steel for me, I would give you in return a share of that asset. Suppose you were to get no more orders? Well, it would be in your interest to see that more orders were forthcoming. You would be undercutting your competitors and at the same time participating in our profit. Manners, yes? Good, put him on. Bill, hurry Manners. I have a question for you, entirely hypothetical, you understand? If you were to receive an order for steel to be delivered to Germany, would there be any problems? I see. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Mr. Pelzer? Yes? Have a cigar. What do you want, this Eddie Morton? Brood. Whose? Mine. After your job, is he? He says not. He wants to be my assistant. Well? He's trouble. He won't be satisfied. He's put the world to rights. He'll be a politician, not a union official. I thought union officials were politicians. Well, not that one. He'd be better off as Pope. God. So you've turned him down? Oh, it's not that easy. If I don't appoint him, he'll stand against us. He's a reg, you know, all for the revolution. He's a canny talker and he might win. What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. I wish Jack Ford was here. Forget Jack. It's time you stood on your own two feet. Oh, I know, Pat, but it affects you and all. We could be chucking away 400 a year. How else can I earn that kind of money? When's the meeting? Oh, yeah, Sunday. And when are you seeing the Eddie Morton again? Tonight, I said I'll see him the, see him the Blue Bell after work. Married man, is he? No. Bring him here. Here? I'd like to meet him. Why? See if he's suitable. If you turn him down, there's always Janet. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, man. Huh? Huh? Oh. 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 Hello, brother. <laughs> <coughs> hey, you're not sick, are you? Oh, no. Oh, just me and Hedley had a few too many last night, that's all. Oh, my head's still spinning. Hey, Eddie, what did uh, he say about you being his assistant? So do you think about it? Well, you're a cheeky bugger. Oh, he'll come round soon enough. He's getting married pretty soon, you know. He's going to want to take out some sort of insurance. Aye. He's a canny fella, though. And he knows the price he'll have to pay. <laughs> It's either that or not. Oh, I wouldn't bet on it. If he decides to go alone, we might be able to stop him. Well, maybe we'd better take out some insurance and all. Aye, but how? Give him a test. Something too big for him. Just to show that he's not up the job. Wages? No, that's no good. We've just had a penny on the basic. The lads wouldn't expect another rise this year. Hey, non-union labour. Too easy. Headley could handle that one with his eyes closed. Unemployment? No, that's a national problem. I mean, there's not a district secretary who can know about that. He could make sure we keep what jobs we've got. If we knew of a firm that was planning to move to another area... Louis Bishop? Eh? Sir Horatio Manners, he's up to something. His secretary told one of the blokes there was a German in to see him this morning. And she overheard him on the phone asking if there was any problems about delivering steel to Germany. Germany, eh? How many today? 35 here, 12 more on the rounds. 47. <laughs> Hippocrates would have a fit. All right, babe. Enough to practice in Gala Shield. You can't go on at this rate, Billy. It's not fair on you or your patients. Fair? What's fairness got to do with it? If life was fair, Doctor, there'd be no need for Wellesley Street. <laughs> Remember when you first walked in here? I asked you which you were, saint or idiot. Well, now we know. Never mind me. What about you? How do you feel? I'd feel a down sight better if you didn't keep barging in at every five minutes disturbing my beauty sleep. I want to be left alone, Billy. Anything you need? Aye. Some morphine. That bottle should have lasted you another three days. I doubled the dose. 
That bad, is it? Mind your own bloody business. You've enough patience out there without bothering about me. I'm under Dr. Stoker. Do you trust him? <laughs> He's had a lot more experience than you. A terrible old quack. Should have been struck off years ago. Won't be long now. I mean it, Billy. Just keep us supplied with morphine, then leave us be. There's nothing much else you can do. I believe uh, you're a whiskey man, Mr. Morton. That's right, miss, but no thanks. <laughs> Ain't told to go easy on it. A cup of tea would do fine if there's one. Put the kettle on, Janet Pet. <coughs> Matt uh, tells me he's considering you for the post of assistant secretary. You could do a lot worse. He told me something else and all. All right. He's scared of you. Says you think too big. Too big for what? For a local union man. He thinks you'd be better off as a politician. Is that right, Brother Headley? Well, I haven't got time for revolutions, brother. I'm too busy. Now you're trouble. You think too small. Branch officials aren't elected to mobilise the whole labour force of the country. Some branch officials aren't elected at all. I know. But I'm not going to promise what I can't deliver. Organising mass rallies is a job for head office. Big trees from little acorns grow. Eh? Grassroots, brother. That's where the real power lies. If we start making waves in Galashield, by the time it reaches London, it'll be a tide. Red tide? Labels, red, blue, purple. What's the difference? You think a man in the door cares? He'll follow the leader that gives him hope, and he won't give a brass farthing for the colour of his politics. The Kaiser gave the Germans hope. And look where he led them. Talking about Germans. There was one at Lewis Bishop's this morning. Why? Well, Sir Horatio's secretary thinks that him and the German could be doing a deal. No wrong with that. Maybe not. But I reckon that the Union ought to find out what they're up to. Why? Not about business. But it could be. Supposing Manners is planning on all these components from Germany. Labour's cheap over there. And some of your members could find themselves redundant. You jumped to conclusions, don't you? All the same, the lads will want to be sure, brother. You let the Germans pinch their jobs. And you wouldn't get elected Union rat catcher. Ah, I'd better have a word with Manners. I never did trust him. Get away. <laughs> and I heard him and Jack Ford were ice time his twins. Well, I'm not Jack Ford. Well, it's just as well, eh? And it's just as well you got friends with the race to the ground and all. What do you think, miss? Me? Oh, I'm just a skivvy, Mr. Morton. That's all I know about. Can you last like you? You're not just a skivvy. Your eyes are too bright. Well, I'm not you. Not at all as I had bright eyes. I thought you knew. Of course I knew you great number, but I didn't know you did. Tell me something. Did you ask him to bring me here? I. So he could make up his mind for him. Matt makes up his own mind, Mr. Morton. Whereas we'll both stand to lose if he makes the wrong decision. He wanted my advice. He's a lucky fella. With you behind him, he could go far. And how far could he go with you behind him? What does that mean? He'll not get stabbed in the back, will he? Not if he does his job, Miss Lytton. Oh, I am an ambitious man, but not for myself. For the thousands of brothers who fought for this country and now find themselves being sold for washers. Those of us who stayed behind know the debt we owe them. And if them buggers up in London try to welch on it, it's up to us to stop them. Make bloody sure the debt is paid in full! Hear, hear! Well, he's right, isn't he? Every word. I thought it wouldn't be long. Hey, Before you paid me a visit. What made you think that's Sir Ratio? Your predecessor. He consumed prodigious quantities of my whiskey and became quite addicted to my cigars. I expect you'll do the same. Uh, no thanks. Oh, come on, man. The brothers aren't watching her in this office. I'll just come to the point if you don't mind. No vices. Headley, you begin to worry me. You worry me and all. Really? Can't for the life of me think why. Louis Bishop's been a closed shop for a considerable time. There was a German in to see you yesterday. Mind tell me who he was? Suppose I do mind. The lads would be suspicious. They'd find out anyway. His name's Peltzer. He's the Duke of Bedlington's nephew. Why? Oh, what's he doing here? We were discussing a business transaction. What sort of business? Private business. All right, if that's the no, way no, you no, want no, it. No, 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 sit down. You were in the same regiment as Miss Anne, weren't you? Aye, a fine officer, Captain Manners, we all like them. Do you still bear a grudge against the Germans? No. Then why are you so interested in this one? I'm interested in anyone who tries to take jobs out of my area. Well, who says he's trying to do that? There's rumours. So I thought I'd better find out what's going on. The Duke asked me to help save his nephew from bankruptcy. 
It turns out that Peltzer can supply certain components at half the price it had to pay in this country. So I've offered him a contract. I'd withdraw that offer if I was you before it's too late. Too late for what? A strike. Oh, don't be an ass, Hitler. If I can produce ships cheaper than the other yards, it'll mean more work for your members. My members don't just work for you. What about the lads making components? Yeah, well, uh, I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. There's only one arrangement we can come to, Sir Horatio. You cancel the arrangement you've got with that Pelser, and I'll see you don't have a strike. An ultimatum. Well, don't tell me you never got one from Jack Ford. We were usually able to settle our differences amicably. Over a glass of whiskey. Sorry. Me, I'll stick to beer. Headley. Ford told me you were responsible for shutting down the Wimborne plant. Said it was you that found out those Klugman machines were dangerous. Is that true? It must be. Jack said so. Obviously a man who takes his job seriously. We've both got our jobs to do, sir, Horatio. Yours is making a profit. Mine has seen that none of my members get hurt in the process. Damn it, why did Grace have to run off and marry a German? Plenty of decent English chaps about. Decent English chaps? and be frightfully boring. I'm not referring to anyone we know. I said decent, Daddy. The indecent ones are much more interesting. And cause much more distress. Does it show? Oh, yeah. Even to an insensitive old man like me. What's he up to? Doing the honourable thing. This honourably. Sounds true to type. Do you care to elaborate? He's giving his wife a divorce. And enjoying every minute of it. How do you know? He's three days overdue. From what? His trip to Scarborough. He took a chorus girl. Three days? And nights. Well, what do you expect? You've no intention of marrying him? No. Nothing to stop him, then? There's no contract, but he does have a moral obligation. Oh, stuff and nonsense, girl. You start talking about moral obligations, you'll drive him straight back to Scarborough. I like him, you know. There's a kind of courage in him. I may be. Is he bad? Pretty bad. Is there no you can do? No. It's TB. He's neglected it so long, it's got a real hold on him. He's trapped, like so many. Slum conditions he lives in, poor food, lack of rest, fresh air. What can Eddie do to change that? And unless he does, he's finished. Look at the last six months. Poor fella. Really? Have you told him? Well, he knows it's serious. He doesn't know it's terminal. Six months. It's not long, Matt. Not long enough to start a revolution. Take care of your mother, son. Come on. You ready to drop? She has never pushed you all the way from the station. Oh, I couldn't stop my man. Dolly! Oh, Mum. Oh, Mum! Get a glass of water, quick. I'm all right now. Why didn't you let us know? Could have come to fetch you. Uh, fine day rest that would have been. Well, it looks like you're the one that needs the rest. All right, go on. You tell her, son. She'll take no notice of me. Oh, stop looking like a lot of old hands. The operation took more out of us than I thought, that's all. Well, take it easy, ma'am, or you could be back in hospital. Uh, you got an appetite like a sparrow? Rushing around like a ten-year-old. If I the use of my legs, I'll lock her up and belt her till she ate proper meals. Brute force. That's all he knows. Well, try being reasonable with you. I must have told you a thousand times, pushing chairs is men's work. Uh, I'll put the kettle on. How's your tummy? Oh, he's jumping. He's down at the farm, talking to the animals. Likes the country, does he? I do. His fresh air's giving him cheeks the colour of the Duke's roses. Oh, got plenty of bairns to play with? Uh-huh. Oh, there's bairns, all right. But they're all older than Tommy. Or else still in their prams. That's not his own age. It doesn't change anything, pet. If it was wrong to pick him before, it's wrong to pick him now. He's still the same fella. He's dying, Matt. What harm can he do? He could make us look like a bairn. A kid doing a man's job. And once he starts carrying on about man of the barricades and the power of the proletariat, I wouldn't get a look in. That's why you don't want him, isn't it? Because he'd stop you getting a look I don't want to because he would turn that office into a propaganda centre. And while he's busy with his slogans and his leaflets, some of my lads could starve. Well, it sounds to me like you both want the same thing, only you've got different ways about going about it. No, it's more than that. I don't believe he really cares, Sarah. Not the way I do. Well, it's your decision. And you've got less than four hours to make it in. Aye, I know. I remember something my dad said when Ramsay MacDonald was elected. You'll see, lass, he said, couple of minutes crack with the king, and he'd forget all about being a socialist. He was right, wasn't he? What's that got to do with Eddie Morton? Give him some responsibility, and maybe he'll forget all about those barricades of his. That'll be the day. At least he'd be somewhere where you could keep an eye on him, better than having him plotting behind your back. I'd never know, though, would I? I'd never know if I could have got it off my own bat.
Are you sure you can make it? It's half a mile to the farm. Half a mile? That's nothing anyway. I could do with a bit there. Ah, it's lovely round here. A lovely eye, but lonely. Tops don't speak to you. Oh, the past the time of day, you know. Evening, Mrs. Seaton, morning, Mrs. Seaton. Well, that's as far as it goes. I still don't know yet. How are you not being married? Well, your Caroline does. Would you tell? She said not, but if her and Jack had a row, she'd want to get her own back, wouldn't she? I don't want you to come back, you know, Dolly. Tom's found his place here. Take my advice and leave him be. Uh, what about Mr. Seaton, the shop? And you find someone else, sharp enough. Right. There's young Tommy. I'll leave him be and all. Where well, there's fresh and there's animals to talk to. But no people. Well, it's up to you, Henny. But mind, if Tom starts fretting back in Gala Shield, it's you he'll blame. And if your man's not happy, it can make your life a misery. What about the shop? Have we answered, Tom? Hi. Why, we've given her a lot of thought, Tolly and me. Well? She's for it. I'm against it. Well, what for? We're well set up here, Da. I don't want to go back to Gala Shield. Your mum says Jack Ford's still in Scarborough. That's right, I. Now, just suppose he's having you on. Suppose he never meant to give Dolly a divorce. He's given us his word. That's good enough for me. All right, then suppose he is playing straight with you. What if the band comes before the divorce, eh? Now, you'll not be able to keep that quiet, and then what happens to your place here? Well, I don't know. I know not about divorces, Da. What has to happen, how long they take? Well, all I know is it'll be hard for you both out here. If these posh folk find out you're living in sin, you'll lose your place for sure. There's no sinful about love, Da. It's not our fault we cannot marry. Well, that's not going to stop the tongues from wagging. There'll be gossip. We know that. You thought I'd tell about your woman to get away from here before her belly starts to swell. I want to do what's best, man, but shopkeeping. Look, man, nobody's asking you to look after the shop. Dolly will do that. She's cut out for it. You look after me. Well, that's what I'm cut out for, is it? I know, listen, son. There's plenty of men I could hire, I admit that. But when your mom thinks her family should take care of it soon, that's why she's pushing herself so hard. I see. Mind, she doesn't want you to come back for her sake. But you do, eh? I want you to come back for yours. The labourers whether you was hired, Tom, or pay a canny wage. Don't you know? I'll tell you what. I'll give you a day's work for now. What do you mean? Pushing you back to the station. Aye. 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 Give yourself a trial run. Well, sorry, Eddie. It's a single ticket. Might can get you there. I'd like to choose my own company. Always have. Now then, brothers, it's one of order, if you please. First item on the agenda, to confirm Brother Headley as Acting District Secretary. Or not, as the case may be. You have something to say, Brother Poskett? I might have. I'm waiting to hear the other nominations first. This is a confirmation meeting, man, not an election. Rule 11, Section C. Before the appointment of any official can be confirmed by the district committee, any other nominations may be considered. It's highly unusual. So is the way Brother Hadley got the job. I got the job fair and square, Sid. Legally appointed by the former district secretary, Jack Ford. Who just happened to be your brother-in-law. And out in the rules, says he can't choose who he wants. All right, then. Answer me this, then. If you hadn't been his brother-in-law, would he have chosen you? He'd not have chosen us. If he didn't think I was up to it, he knew what he was getting. Oh, aye. We'd been through the war together, he'd seen us under fire. He knew I'd not run away from a fight. Time you stopped living in the past, man. You're going to be fighting them battles for the rest of your life. Aye, brother. All me bloody life. All right. Are there any other nominations? I nominate Brother Morton. Why? What do you mean, why? You asked for other nominations, I gave you one. You've got someone against Brother Headley? Yes, I have. I don't think much of a district secretary that lets Lewis Bishop order its components from Germany. They haven't. I put a stop to it. Aye. And who was it told you about it, eh? Who was it warned you that Sir Harish, your manners, was up to something? I'll tell you, brothers. It was Eddie Morton. That's who it was. How was she? Mum. Oh, fair and middling. Took it slow. What did you tell your dad about the shop? I told him I'd give him his answer in three days. But I know what it'll be, Pat, what it'll have to be. Because of your mum? Why? She's near the end of a rope, Dolly. You can see it in her eyes. 
Not without Jessie going and all. I'll have to take some of the strain off her. So we're going? Aye, we're going. When? As soon as possible. I'll give me notice in tomorrow. What about my stuff? Why, it's not worth keeping. Darcy will help us set up with a new place, so we'll sell what we can and start again. Tom, I know how you feel, Pet, about going back there. But we're doing what's right. It's right for your mom and for me and the bane. And what about me? It's right for you and all. We'll not have to worry if Jack Ford starts playing games with a divorce. Once we're back in Garibaldi Street, we'll be kind of, well, out of sight. Nobody knows we're there. And we'll have a lot more room. Aye, room for a few flowers in a window box. Hey, I'll be growing and all, remember. And I'll need a lot of cultivating. You'll get it. Buys a poor gardener that plants a seed and then forgets to tend it. Hey, Tom Sydney, I never used to say things like that before you took up with me. Oh, there's other things I never did before I took up with you and all. Oh, aye. Such as what, like? We're in the other room, and I'll show you. Point of order, Brother Chair. Brother Baines. Rule 11, Section D. If there's more than one nomination, the committee should hear a statement from each of the nominees. Right. Who'd like to say something? I would. You have first crack, then. How are you going, Brother Headley? Are you a union man? Fought the good fight, the best of his ability. Which has been a limited fight, a defensive fight. And I reckon that we should look to our district secretary for a more aggressive policy. I believe we should be coordinating with head office, planning a national strategy to carry attack to the enemy. Because that's the only way we'll get things changed in this country, brothers. The only way we'll upset the status quo. Yeah. If we like a few local brush fires one by one, they can put them out. But if it's a big national sheet of flame, they'll never be able to... to... <gasps> I'll get you something out of here. <laughs> All right. I might eat before I come out. All right then, Eddie. Hi. Finished, have you? Brother Headley. I share Brother Morton's aims. I agree about a national strategy and all. But it's not the district secretary's job to fight it. That's what the blokes and others are for. If I spend all my time coordinating, who'd look after the sick fella? Been sacked without compensation. Well, a widow had been told her husband's death was due to his own negligence. It's canny talk, all that stuff about sheets of bloody flame, but it's not going to put foot into our members' mouths. Not now, today, when they're needed. It may be a limited fight, brothers, but it's life and death to some. And I am not going to broaden me front till I've made sure the wounded are cared for. And you call yourself a socialist? Aye, I do. A socialist who thinks people are worth more than principles. Man can't live by bread alone, brother. You would like him to live by no bread at all? Oh, I'd like him to stand up and fight for his rights. Solidarity, brother. That's the passport to freedom. Seems we'll have a clear-cut choice, then. A man who thinks the district secretary should be more concerned with national policy, or a man who thinks he should be attending to local matters. All those in favour of Brother Morton, please show. Those in favour of Brother Headley. I declare Brother Headley confirmed as acting secretary by four votes to two. You don't want me around, do you, Friedrich? Thank you, no, Uncle. <coughs> now you've oiled the wheels, it is up to us to put them in motion. Well, if they need any more oiling, the whiskey's in the decanter. Do the honours, would you manners? Interesting. What? I am his nephew, yet he asks you to be the host. He thinks of me as an alien. He's not the only one. Oh? The district secretary of the Fitters Union. He found out about our meeting and came to warn me. If I go through with our deal, he'll call a strike. Because I'm still an enemy? Because some of his members will lose their jobs and to Germany of all places. I see. I'm sorry. I just don't see how we can proceed. Suppose you were to set up a nominee company. We would not then have to deal directly with one another. The nominee would have to be discreet. Discretion can be bought. You could perhaps find someone with no reputation to lose. Indeed, I could. You know of such a person? I know just such a person. Unfortunately, he'll not be cheap.
No hard feelings, Eddie. I still think you're wrong. Like a chance to prove it? No. Oh. I want you as my assistant. You're not kidding us. We'll make a fair team, you and me. You could plan the strategy, and I'll look after the wounded. Why didn't you ask me before? I had to stand on your new feet. If I'd ridden into the job on your back, you'd never let us forget it. There's other things I'll never let you forget. I'll take my chances. Fair enough. So will I and all. On a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the haddock when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the bloater when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the mackerel when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the salmon when the boat comes in. <laughs> 